Hi everyone, um, welcome to episode 85 of the Knitting Expat Podcast. My name is Mina and I'll be your host today. As you can probably see, I am not in my home in Bahrain where I usually record from. I am currently in the UK and if you are a returning viewer then you will know that I am in the UK visiting family. Um, we came, well I came for a friend's wedding and also we decided to stay a little bit longer. Perry, my husband, is coming to join me here tomorrow and um, yeah. And if you're a new viewer, thank you so much for checking me out. I am filming today, kind of spare of the moment, wasn't really planning to. Um, like I said, if you watched my podcast last week or the week before, you'll know that I wasn't planning on recording a podcast whilst in the UK and I usually record on Wednesdays. Today is Monday the 7th of November. And yeah, I've been intending on vlogging and doing little clips as I go out and about and stuff, but to be perfectly honest, I realised today is the fifth day I'm in London and um, I haven't picked up my camera once. So, um, for a number of reasons. One, I'm here visiting family, visiting friends, it's just situations that aren't always necessarily vlogging appropriate, and or at least ones where I'm not comfortable. And um, I haven't actually done that much. I mean, this, week, last, this weekend, last couple of days, um, I went to a friend's wedding so one of my best friends got married and it was so lovely to be there and to be part of that and it was just a really lovely weekend. Um, but again, it just didn't feel right to film that. So um, so I didn't. And like I said, I haven't really got much else to share. I haven't really done much else since getting back. And I realised I'm not really going to be doing that much else that's going to be vlogging friendly, I guess, um, whilst I'm here. And that's mostly because my back is really bad at the moment, it's not particularly great, it's pretty painful most of the time, it's pretty consistent, and um, so yeah, so it just means I'm not really doing that much. Um, but anyway, <laughs> on that note, I have got quite a few knitting things to share with you, and because some of these knitted projects aren't going to come back with me to Bahrain, I'm not going to have another chance necessarily to show them to you. So I had a bit of spare time today, spent a day at home, and um, I thought I'd film a quick little vlog for you guys. Vlog? Podcast. <laughs> so it's kind of a bonus, I'm not sure if I'm going to have show notes, I will have an episode thread up for this in the group, which you can find at Knitting Expat um, Podcast on Ravelry. You can find me on Ravelry as um, Mina Phillip, you can find me on Instagram as Knitting Expat, and you can find show notes for this, uh, well for previous episodes of this podcast and potentially for this one at knittingexpat.wordpress.com. I will try and do show notes, um, but they might not go up at the same time as a video, but we'll see. More than likely, it probably will. <laughs> I kind of like to have everything done properly all, all the time. But anyway, like I said, I don't have show notes, so I'm a little bit off the cuff today, and um, I don't think I'm going to be doing all my usual segments. I'll have finished objects, works in progress, and then basically some chatter at the end. That's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Don't really have much else to share. Um, oh, and I do have my October stats. I realised I forgot to talk about that last week and I only realised after I finished recording and published the episode. So I will quickly run through the stats for last month with you guys. A lot of you seem to really enjoy that and um, I enjoy recapping and seeing what I've managed to achieve. And uh, yeah. Oh, and I know I get questions about what knitwear I wear in videos and stuff when I do wear them. This is my um, The Brownstone Pullover by Jared Flood. Um, it's a Brooklyn Tweed pattern. And I knit this out of some mystery yarn that I had earlier this year. Um, and yeah, really like it. Finally actually getting to wear it. <laughs> I wear it a lot in the house and actually when I go out, if I don't need to take a coat with me, I'll, I'll wear this with like a shawl or something to cover this area. But I'm actually sat right in front of the radiator at the moment, so I'm starting to feel quite warm and I might have to take it off in a bit. But um, but yeah, so we'll get started with October stats because I have my laptop on my lap and we'll start with that. So first up, I finished 17 projects in total in the month of October. I did one shawl, four pairs of socks, one baby blanket, five hats, two of which were for the baby, um, one stuffy, uh, one sort of like knitted toy, two baby sweaters, one baby dress, one adult sweater or cardigan and one cow. Um, yeah and one cow. So that's 17 projects total. So I knit 5,504 meters total in October. So that's total meters knit not 
um, the total yardage from each skein. Um, and that's 1,893 grams knit in October. I got 37 skeins of yarn out of stash in the month of October, and only two skeins came in, which was amazing. <laughs> Pretty good going, I thought. Um, when I say 37 skeins out, I count skeins that are partially used as skeins out. That way, if I ever use the leftovers in another project, I don't count it again. It counts as zero at that point. So, um, or if I've knit a project from scraps, then the scraps don't count as skeins out because I've already counted that yarn as having left my stash. Um, so basically, I don't count scraps as stash, even though I'm. I've now realised I have quite a sizable amount of scraps that almost account, almost should count as their own level of stash. I don't know. I might have to rethink how I figure that one out next year. But I'm quite happy with where I'm standing at the moment with um, my current tally. I am now officially <laughs> below. My total stash number is now officially less than what it was at the end of last year. So when I started 2016, my stash was at, I think, according to what I have on my spreadsheet, I had 253 skeins, and that's anything from like 100 grams, 100 gram skein counts as one, a 200 gram skein if it was one skein counted as one, or a 50 gram skein counted as one skein. So I counted each individual sort of skein or hank or ball of yarn as its own thing, um, and then whatever weight it was, like I didn't really go into that much detail of it. Um, my biggest aim this year was to end the year with less yarn that I started the year with. And so far, I am just under that benchmark. I've still got two months to go, so I think I'm gonna be doing all right with that one. And I'm quite chuffed with, chuffed with that, that I managed to use more yarn than I've brought in so far. Um, and yeah, so that's basically my, um, update in terms of stats put the laptop down and we'll dive right into the finished objects i'm probably going to go chronological here so first up finished object that i have and none of these are blocked because I just haven't had time is the yarn is a, a shawl that i'm designing out of the let's see if i can get this to fall. it's too bright oh there we go it's just the gala yarns uh prime alpaca naturals it's a super fine alpaca made in Peru. Details, I've been over this several times on the podcast now. This is all I have left. A little teeny tiny ball from a giant um, eight ounce skein. And it is, It's the, the label says it's a, it's a DK weight, but I think it's more of a sport weight yarn. And it's at the right side, that's the right side. Okay, it's not been blocked, so you really can't tell. And it doesn't look like it's that big yet, but it is actually going to be quite a big shawl once it's stretched out. It's just really sort of like squishy and soft and cuddly and smushy and great for the winter time. Although I have to say this alpaca does shed quite a bit this yarn. Um, and so yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back home and I might actually try blocking it here, like hanging blocking it. But um, there's a bit of a bump at the top, which I've, I've adjusted the pattern the final pattern is going to be adjusted slightly, so hopefully that won't be as exaggerated as it is at the moment. And hopefully it will mostly block out as well. But I really love how this has turned out. I'm not sure how well you can see the texture pattern in there at the moment. But it will. this is one that you will see again when I get back to Bahrain and I've been able to block it. I finished this on the plane, actually. And our, my flight over was... It wasn't eventful in that there was nothing really bad happened, but it was delayed quite a bit. Um, so I had to fly from Bahrain to Dubai and then Dubai to London, um, just because I was flying with Emirates. And um, our, the flight from Dubai to London was delayed by an hour and a half. We got on the plane, everything was ready to go on time. Um, and then the pilot came on to say that there was something wrong with one of the parts to do with the fuel injection. It sounded kind of important. And he said that they were going to have to wait until the engineers could replace it. And that they said it was going to take an hour and a half to fix. And it did take exactly yeah. an hour and a half to fix it. And I was like, you know what? That's totally fine. That sounds kind of important. Oh, I kind of, you know, don't want to have an accident. So by all means, take your time and fix the plane. Um, 
but it was fine. Got to watch a film while we were waiting and it's all good. But it did mean that the extra hour and a half meant I pretty much finished the shawl on the flight. And I still had a few hours spare, so I got to get some knitting done as well and socks. Um, speaking of which, I actually, on the flight, finished the heels on this pair of socks and was, you know, got set up and ready to knit the foot. So this pair of socks are for my father-in-law. I only finished these last night, so I haven't blocked them yet, but I will try and block them before I go to see him so they'll be nice and freshly washed and, you know, look neat. Um, the yarn is a Regia 4-ply four co four, four colour and it's, color, it's colourway number 7709. It's just a pretty standard self-striping from Regia. I knit these on 2.5mm needles and for anyone um, who watched last week and was listening to me trying to explain about how I knit my socks and to use up the most amount of yarn, so this took 90 grams. So I used up a decent size amount of yarn. Um, I knit them to fit a UK size 10.5 slash 11. Um, 64 stitches on 2.5mm needles. I did 20 rounds in the leg, 80, sorry, 20 rounds for the cuff, 80 rounds in the leg, German short row heel, and I did do the faux sort of like mini gusset. Not sure how well you'll be able to pick that up there. I tried a different way of doing it. I didn't do any slip stitches on the back, but I tried doing a garter stitch on the edge to see if that made the pick up neater, and it has. So I quite like that. But so I've got a little mini gusset there. Um, and then I did 70 rounds in the foot, and I haven't actually measured how long the foot is because that might be better for some people. And then I did my standard rounded toe. I don't know if I'm going to measure. I will measure how long the foot is. I'll give you an idea. So from the from when I finish the heel to the end of the foot, or to the start of the toe, might be better. To the start of the toe is about. 16, 17 centimeters. I'm not sure what that is in inches. Um, maybe about nine inches. Nine ish inches. It's, it's a pretty long foot. It's pretty long. And that's just to the start of the toe. And bear in mind the toe adds another one and a half, two inches to the total length. So the foot length total from the end of the heel is about 21 centimeters. So that's It's a long foot, pretty pretty standard length, and I could have made it longer. I, I easily, like I said, there's 10 grams left. It could have easily been an inch longer in the foot, and it would have been fine. But the moment the way it's worked out when it's folded over, the toe is to the start of where the cuff is almost on the thing. I, I definitely would have had enough yarn to get the foot longer to meet the end of the cuff. So if you're knitting for a man who's got bigger feet, um, that would have been fine. Bear in mind these are 64 stitches, but I did do it on 2.5 millimeters, which um, is a slightly looser gauge than I normally would do, but because my father-in-law has um, more sizable calves, I wanted to make sure that these would fit. And I asked Perry if his, his dad would prefer long or short socks, and he said do long ones, so I've done long ones. I guess he can always fold them down if he doesn't want them that long. But I'm quite chuffed with that. I've got those finished before we head down to see them. And yeah. My next finished object, which is the last one I have to show you, is another design. Um, it's a bulky weight hat out of some really cute yarn. I absolutely love the name of this yarn, which is actually probably the main reason I bought it. I picked it up when I went up to Connecticut in January to meet up with some friends and I picked up this skein of there we go, rhino fluff, <laughs> how cute is that? And it's the bulky two ply, um, 117 meters and 100 grams. It's 100% Peruvian Highland wool in the garnet colorway. Details on the back. And it's this beautiful sort of rich red color. And it's looking a bit more um, orange red than it is in real life. If it will focus, there we go looking a bit more orange red on the camera but it is a really nice sort of bright sort of cherry red that's actually better there the lighting's a bit I'm sat right in front of the, the window Ooh. there 
there we go. <laughs> I'm sat right in front of the window in the bedroom and um, it, it's, it's very cloudy outside, so it's overcast, so it's, good, it's quite good light, but it's quite bright at the same time. And this is how the hat turned out. I'm quite chuffed with it. I got a little faux fur pom-pom on the top just because I really like how the grey looks with the red. Um, and yeah, I haven't like attached it on super securely, so I probably need to go back and fix that. But I still need to block the hat. I haven't, um, I've sort of charted the pattern, but I haven't written it up yet. And I'm knitting a couple of other bits to kind of go into a, a collection. Um, got a pair of socks on the go, which will incorporate the pattern in some way. And I have another pattern in mind as well, which I'm not even sure I have the yarn for yet. So it might be a while before these are released. But uh, yeah, I'm super happy with how this has turned out. And um, stay tuned for this pattern at some point in the future. Um, I didn't do a folded brim on this one because I wasn't sure if I was gonna have enough yarn, but I probably probably could have done a small one. But, um, and yeah, again, this pattern will be available in multiple sizes once I get it written up. So that's the hat. And that was also a really quick knit. I finished this yesterday morning over breakfast <laughs> with my friends before we headed back to London after the wedding. The wedding was out of town and uh, it was up, actually up in Suffolk near um, Oldborough. Anyone in the UK who knows where that is, it's near Ipswich. And uh, yeah, so those were my finished objects. Um, right, and moving on to works in progress. The first one, which is in my yarn parlor bag, hasn't actually changed at all. These are the pebble socks that I am knitting for my dad out of Crazy Zalba Ball. So if you watched the podcast last week, you'll see they have not changed one bit. I was sort of focusing on the socks for my father-in-law because I need to have this finished before I go to see him. But also because um, the socks are really great for like on the go travel projects. So I didn't want to work too much on these ones. So I had these to work on after those because it's such a simple pattern. It's one I can do on the go almost as easily as a vanilla sock. So um, without much thinking and stuff. So I was keeping that to work on after that one as my next sort of traveling around London project. The next work in progress, sorry, the yarn is Crazy Zalba Ball and it's in the Herbst Wind colorway. And it's actually a colorway I've already knit a pair of socks for my dad out of. It was the very first pair of socks I ever knit for my dad it was out of that colorway. So, um, so yeah, he likes them a lot. So I thought I'd make him another pair. Um, the next work in progress is another pair of socks and this is going to be the one that's going to be in a matching pattern to the hat. I've only just finished the cuffs. I finished these last night so um, not very far at all. The yarn I'm using for this is um, Five Moons. It's uh, Five Moons Luna Plus Four Ply Solids. It's a 75 superwash merino 25% nylon. It's a hand painted yarn and it's the Sour Cherry Knot colorway. It's the, it comes in 50 gram skeins. If it, it comes in 50 gram skeins and I picked this up at uh, Fiverr East. Is it Fiverr East? Over the summer when I was here. So that's what the color looks like in the ball and I obviously have two of these. So and these socks will eventually be for my mum but she probably won't <laughs> get them at the end of this trip. Um, I actually did give my mum six pairs of socks when I got to London, so she's got plenty to keep her going. But this is going to be matching with the hat that I showed you a moment ago. Then next up, my final work in progress. Um, sorry, and those socks are being knit on 2.25 millimeter knit pro zincs, if you're interested. Next up is a whole lot of ribbing. This is another hat pattern that I'm working on. Um, I've only just finished the ribbing section I now I'm going to this is going to have a folded brim so for those of you who are interested I knit the this is the way I do it I have instructions on um, another method of doing it in the in my patterns as well so you can either do it this way where you just cast on you knit your rib and then I fold it inwards and I will one day do a tutorial on how to do this but the problem is with our upcoming move and everything I just do not have the time or the capacity to be able to film tutorials at the moment so I'm really sorry for that. Um, I sort of just fold it together and then on the row when I'm joining I kind of just do a modified 
uh, three needle, not bind off, but a three needle knit two together. So I knit two together essentially, one from the active live stitches and then I pick up one and knit it together uh, with the live stitch from the cast on edge and sort of just work away round. Um, that's kind of how I do it and you know if it doesn't work out 100% exactly one for one and you end up with like one or two extra stitches at the end, you can just fudge it and make it work. It's on the inside of the hat, no one else will see it and it won't be obvious from the outside. The alternative method of doing it would be to cast on provisionally with a provisional cast on, either with like a crochet chain or an alternative provisional cast on of your choice. Um, again, I have directions for this in the patterns that have this feature. Um, and then you unpick the provisional cast on, put it on a spare set of needles, and then you do knit two together from your cast on edge to your live stitches all the way around. It's the same sort of thing. I just, I don't bother with the provisional cast on because it just saves a bit of time. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really look any different, in my opinion. But um, some people might prefer to do that method. And like I said, I have instructions on how to do that in the pattern as well. Or for this pattern, it will be in. But I have it in a bunch of my other patterns that include the double brim. So um, the Shire Stones hat, the Mariam hat, the Open Skies hat. Those three are my three latest hat patterns that include a, a folded brim and instructions on how to do that. So I've just finished the ribbing now. And the yarn that I'm using for this hat is by Ball of Love Yarns. A card, if it will, there we go. Ball of Love Yarns. And this is in the Skinny Super Sheet, 100% Superwash Merino, 400 yards, 100 grams, fingering weight. And this is the Mist colorway. Now I'm actually holding it double, so I'm, the hat is actually a worsted weight hat. But I didn't have any worsted weight yarn in um, the colours or sort of in co two colours that would work well together because this is going to be a colour work type hat. So it's in Mist and Sugared Violets and these were both yarns that were sent to me by the lovely um, lady who's, oh, I'm so sorry, I can't remember her name at the moment, who has the Ball of Love yarns Etsy shop. I think she's on Etsy, yeah, on Etsy. And um, she sent me some of her yarn to try out and I thought it would work really well for this pattern. Um, so yeah, this pattern is actually in testing at the moment and then there will be a matching cowl pattern to go with it, which I have the yarn with me to cast on and get going on this trip, but we will see when I, when and if I get to that. Um, so these, this will be coming out as a set, the hat and cowl set. So yeah, I'm really excited about that. And this is probably the last you'll see of this hat until I'm ready to release it. So... That pretty much sums up the knitting. <laughs> uh, like I said, I haven't had all that much knitting time. Been spending time with family, had the wedding and stuff, so it's been a bit busy, but also quite tiring. I haven't been sleeping particularly great. Um, just different bed and all that sort of stuff, and back's been a bit annoying. <laughs> it's, it is what it is. But, um, but yeah. So onto the chatter stuff. I probably won't take too long for this, but um, yeah. So I already talked about my flight over. That was all fine. Uh, I actually ended up watching five films on the flight over to London. It was a, it was quite a long flight in the end um, with the delay and everything. But got here fine, all good. <laughs> got to London and actually it was we got to the airport or just before we got to the airport, I I had a sudden realization that I forgot to put my shoes on. And I'd left the house in my Birkenstocks, which are sandals. <laughs> I was coming to London where I knew it was going to be wet and rainy and all sorts. I did have a pair of like really lightweight trainers in my suitcase. Um, so I knew I had those to put on. So, but getting to, <laughs> I got out of the airport and it was pouring down with rain. And I'm stood there in sandals going like, okay, this is not great. It's not the sort of mistake I usually make, but um, I guess with being pregnant, it wasn't really um, <laughs> to be expected that stuff like this would happen. But uh, so my first day here on the Friday, my mum didn't had took the day off, and we headed into the well Harrow, which is the town where my parents are, and um, we popped out. And I picked up a pair, of, a new pair of trainers, which I really desperately needed to be perfectly fair. Like I did need some new trainers. The ones I have back home are really old and probably need to go to the bin. Um, so I picked up a pair of trainers, and I also managed to 
find a pair of shoes to wear for the wedding which was great because again I had bought a pair of shoes with me to wear but they're not the most comfortable or the most supportive so I was really looking for something else so I'm very glad I was able to get those um picked up a couple of other bits and I sent out <laughs> the prize winners package for the scraps that I was giving away recently so that's all good um yeah and then Saturday morning I headed down to meet up with some friends who'd hired a car to go up to the wedding like I said the wedding was out of town so we had to drive out there and the trains weren't working which is why we had to get a car but that was actually really nice to um sort of drive up with some friends or to catch up with some people and yeah again the wedding was really really lovely uh went off without a hitch all was really good um yeah it was just a shame I couldn't be as involved in like the dancing and stuff just because of my back I just couldn't really <laughs> couldn't really do any of that but um, it was just really nice and I was so happy that I was able to make it and to be there for that and then yeah I got back yesterday afternoon and um, just spent time with family home the afternoon evening and I've been home all day today not been doing much else Perry gets here tomorrow morning um, we have a few things planned over the next couple of days that we're in London we're going to meet up with some friends for dinner tomorrow night and then going to go down to Kingston to visit my aunt uh, on Wednesday and then and then yeah and then Friday we're heading down to see his family for the weekend and some of his friends are going to be coming over to see us and stuff so um so yeah so that's pretty much it and then we're back up to London on the Monday and we leave on head back to Bahrain on Tuesday we are still <laughs> waiting for plans to be finalized for our move like I said we know where we're going we're just waiting for final confirmation of exactly where we're going <laughs> That sounds incredibly cryptic and annoying, I know. Um, believe me, it is just even more frustrating for me. I was talking to my friends about it. My, fr my close group of girlfriends are probably one of the only people outside of our families that we've told where we're going. And it was just really funny because I, I really told them, I was like, okay, we're pretty sure we're going here. And then I saw them after we got up here and I was like, well, actually, now we might be going here. <laughs> but it's just, it's it just keeps changing. My dad made a very good analogy. He was like, it's a lot like this election, the US elections at the moment. One minute is going one way and the next minute is going the other and you just never know where it's gonna end up. Um, and it really is how it feels sometimes with this whole um, move at the moment. Like I said, because Perry's deciding between a couple of jobs at the moment, he's still waiting for some information to come in and certain things to happen. With time differences and um, other people's travel plans and stuff like that, things can, things have been a bit more delayed than we would have liked so um but to be perfectly honest by the time we get back to Bahrain we have to know where we're going because we don't have a lot of time after that <laughs> we really need to get stuff sorted namely organizing the movers and getting the boys relocated um so yeah I'm trying not to think about it too much because the more I think about it the more stressed out I get because I don't know where we're going but I know as soon as we do know where we're going, it's going to be so easy in comparison. <laughs> the actual move isn't what's worrying me and it isn't what's stressing me out. It's the not knowing that's getting quite stressful. Um, it would just be nice to know. And to end things off, I am now officially 25 weeks pregnant. I forgot to mention this at the beginning. I usually mention it at the top of the podcast. But um, so yeah, for those of you who don't know, I am pregnant. I'm sat down, so you probably can't really tell that much. But um, I'm now 25 weeks pregnant. I have quite the bump going on. <laughs> and um, yeah, everything's going well. She's doing all right. I did actually have my glucose test, the weird sugary drink thing they make you take and do a blood test just before I got um, came back to London, the last appointment I went to a couple of days before we left, before I left. Um, so I haven't had the results back yet, but I'm assuming it's fine. Um, I'll find out once I get back. Um, but yeah. I think that pretty much sums it up for this week. I don't think I have anything else to share. Hopefully this will go up either later today on Monday or it'll probably go up tomorrow if not today. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much for tuning in. I am not sure if I'll have another podcast next week or not. If I do, it might be like this one, a short one, just to like update you on knitting and stuff. But otherwise, um, I do have a video that will go up next week for the bag update, the shop update that I have. Um, the following weekend on the 19th so if you want to see what's going to be in that update then make sure you check that out and yeah thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you have a lovely week take care and happy knitting bye